Quack, quack. He answered. Quack, quack. Take vomit. <laughs> What's that? This? Huh. This is my uh, pre mixed gin and tonic. <laughs> These are our stunt ducks. I've hired some stunt ducks. The shifters, I got a little bit more funding, and we've hired some uh, stunt ducks. And these uh, stunt, stunt ducks. We got some stunt ducks with us today. Quack, quack, quack. Basically, they're just going to quack. Hi there, this is Cooking Kitty. Welcome to uh, the uh, episode 56 of uh, Shifterland. And uh, today we're going to uh, we're gonna go foraging, hunting for mushrooms. Mushrooms, we're gonna go looking for some mushrooms. And um, uh, we're in a, in a specified uh, unnamed location. I can't, I can't share, I cannot share my location with you. Uh, we, we are not in Seattle. Um, we are not in the Arboretum. Uh, by the way, thanks uh, that Proposition 1 got voted down. Proposition 1, Seattle and King County. Uh, part of it, I mean, light rail, that's all cool. People got to move around. But I figure the only way this city is going gonna, gonna to work is until it's impossible to drive. And then um, if people, uh, people stop driving because there's too much traffic, so they won't even be able to drive. So, oh, one of the most important, one uh, important tool, I'd say the number one tool you need for uh, hunting for mushrooms is gin and tonic. Make sure. At all times, when hunting for mushrooms, you have a gin and tonic available because uh, it's going to open up your vision a little bit. You know what I mean? And you'll be able to scout out, you know, tell the uh, chicken from the trees, the ducks from the grass, that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, back to Prop One. Part of the deal is they, they wanted to. Part of the deal is that we're they were going to pave over one of the most beautiful parts of this city uh, with um, uh, uh, Proposition One. They're going to. Uh, They're going to make more uh, more freeway lanes on 520. They're going to build another section of 520. They're going to pave over an entire section of the lower Arboretum way down over here. And uh, we can't have that. Uh, you know, I don't know. Name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I didn't vote, but, you know, thank God some other people got out there and did it because I was too lazy. I was too busy drinking. I can't be bothered to vote. You know, there's the Republicans and there's the, uh, oh, the Democrats, you know, and no matter what team does, I just have to react. I mean, it's like, you know, the Democrats, I suppose I'm a Democrat, Democrat, but they might they might be a little better, but, you know, I don't know. I got friends that say Bill Clinton was the worst president ever. I don't know. He's the president. I mean, a uh, Democrat. But anyway, so anyway, so, mushroom honey. Got to have a gin and tonic. Definitely got to have a gin and tonic while you're mushroom honey. Two other important tools. Basket. All the, all the manuals, every manual I say about mushroom hunting, uh, it says you got to have a basket. Got to definitely have a basket because uh, isn't it so romantic? Like it should have like we're on a picnic, like you're having a bottle of wine or something. So anyway, and there is another thing, another thing that I find very handy to have when uh, mushroom foraging is a knife. My dad gave me this knife. I'd like to imagine that uh, his grandfather and his grandfather gave it to him, but you know I don't really know. So anyway, we got this knife. So it's it's awesome. It's two things. Uh, you can um, cut those really. Those are hard to get mushrooms, you can cut those off with the knife. And then uh, um, another thing, some of these some of these mushrooms are highly hotly contested for. You can't you can't tell people what location is. People are dying. People are getting killed because of their uh, their uh, um, their territories for their mushrooms. And so uh, you know, besides cutting the mushrooms, this could be used as a weapon in case someone 
this is what I got. You come into my mushroom hunting territory, foragers, all you commercial pickers, whoever the hell you are, you come you come come on my territory, you get the knife. Thanks, Dad. I forgot to add uh, one more tool that's uh, you know, I'm not I'm not really much in the progress, more roads, more condos, I'm not really progress, but anyway, I'm not all about progress, but one of the tools that I am, uh, it's modern things of science, is these uh, special goggles that have uh, enhanced spectral sensitivity, that kind of thing, you know, it can see way, way, way deep in all those different layers that the human eye can't see, and so uh, these, these, uh, these help me find mushrooms, because I can see, uh, I could just see their aura, I could see their shape hidden leaves, you know, you got a brown mushroom, growing in a, a pile of brown cow manure, you know, dung. I know, I, I know there's a lot of mushrooms that like to grow in dung. Anyway, sometimes all that stuff blends together, the, all the subtleties, these goggles, you know. There's, I had to get a second mortgage in my house to get them, but you know, uh, foraging for mushrooms is gonna pay off in the long run, and I'll be able to pay back my mortgage. But uh, um, yeah, it just, it just helps you be able to uh, delineate between mushroom, and non-mushroom. Hi there, this is Cook and Kitty, and uh, we're on a hunt for some mushrooms. And uh, you know, we're gonna, I'm sure, I've been looking hard, and we're gonna find some mushrooms. We found some ducks, some, actually I hired those ducks. But anyway, uh, it's pretty funny. I've been doing some research on, uh, I've been doing some research on, um, God, it's beautiful here. Totally beautiful, super gorgeous. Uh, and uh, they wanna all tear it down because there'd be more roads, isn't that silly? Anyway, uh, in my research for uh, foraging mushrooms, I learned a lot of things. They got all these different categories. I find it very interesting that it's very unscientific. They have all these categories for if it's um, poisonous or uh, uh, if they're edible or not. Like there's, there's. Let me see. What, what? Uh, oh, there's uh, deadly poisonous. I'll show you one a little later. Eat that. It's deadly poisonous. If it doesn't kill you outright, then uh, what it does is give you permanent liver damage, and you're probably screwed the entire rest of your life. But probably what will happen is you just die. But uh, Anyway, that's a tight, yeah, so that, that's, uh, yeah, you want to stay from that. But see, then it gets really kind of funny, because then you got probably poisonous, but not for sure poisonous. And then another category, another category is that this is one of my favorite trees in all of Seattle right here. It's a uh, maple, what is it? It's a... I was right. It's a, yeah, it's a, bir uh, you're right. It's a birch bark cherry, Southwest China, number 143-82. Scientific name? Perunus cerula. So you got you got a deadly poisonous, probably poisonous. Another one you got is what is it? Potentially. You got probably pointed, po probably poisonous, and then you've got possibly. I mean, that seems so fucking vague. Probably poisonous, or potentially poisonous, possibly poisonous. And then you got another classification, unedible. I guess it just means it tastes bad, but it's not going to kill you. And then uh, you got another one is uh, well, you got edible. And then another category, one of my more one of my favorite categories that I find very odd. Edibility, edibility unknown. All this modern science, like why is the I kind of say that? edibility, edibility, ed edibility unknown. By the way, my, my camera person is putting up lipstick right now. Notice that the, the multitasking. Anyway, I just wanted to share with you these weird classifications. Oh, I forgot one, which we're going to get to for sure later, if, if you know what I mean. It's called hallucinogenic. I mean, I mean I'm here for the edible mushrooms, but there are some that uh, will get you high. Oh, wait a minute. What? Wait, where? I thought I saw some. Oh, look at these little guys. Can you see those? There's no dung here. These, these mushrooms are growing at the base of a cherry tree. Let me consult my book. Ah, aha. Uh -huh. I see. They are... They are, uh considered to be probably poisonous so we're not gonna we're not gonna collect those ones probably poisonous and uh, they are uh, they are known their scientific name Paxilus 
Vernalis, Paxilis Vernalis. If anyone out there speak Greek or Latin, you probably know what the F that means. <laughs> We're gonna leave those ones be. Hi there, Cooking Kitty here. I think I, I think I found another one of those. Uh, let me see here. Oh, I found another one of those rare, one of those rare mushrooms. Not so rare, but a medium rare. I know. Anyway, this uh, this mushroom here is uh, uh, it's uh, layman's term is called condoitis, condoitis, and uh, its uh, scientific name is called. Let me see here. Let me. Where is that fucker? No, excuse me, kids. Uh, the scientific name is Romeria, Romeria Abatini, Romeria Abatini, and uh, it's well. It says right here, it's edible, fruiting body, three to ten centimeters, and there you go, three to ten centimeters. I don't know what the hell fruiting body means. I don't know, but uh, anyway, this mushroom was nicknamed Condoitis because it's a big fan of. Uh, uh, in the stores and whatnot, of people who people who go buy condos, they uh, 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 they have so much guilt because uh, uh, I don't know there's so much guilt of uh, buying, so they go and get the Romeria abentinia, and uh, they're guilty because I don't know they they eat these mushrooms because it kind of takes care of that guilt from uh, people that are buying all the condos, and the more condos that are bought, the more that are made. And it's a vicious cycle, and it's causing uh, 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 basically it's an erosion of society. All these condos get put up, and uh, society's tanking. Too many condos, way too many condos. Wouldn't need that. And uh, and another thing, every like you know every. What about urban density? Urban density is a positive thing or a negative thing. I think there's two sides of the coin. Depends on uh, your viewpoint. I mean.
Land const land castration. Crusta what are the crustaceans? Land constrations. Well, the other thing, I don't know. People eat these mushrooms. I don't got nothing to say about urban density. It's above. It's above my head. It's that that kind of thinking is way above me. Uh, but another reason why some people like to eat these mushrooms is um, because they've they bought them. Um, see, it's it's awesome. There's no way of misidentifying this mushroom. There's so many others that can be misidentified, and then you eat them, you might die. But this one, definitely. I mean, who's gonna who's gonna misidentify that? You can identify condoitis mushroom by, well, obviously, a green ring with a center of red goo. That is how you can identify the condoitis mushroom out in the field. You're not gonna mistake it. You know, it's not very common, but you know, if you look hard enough, you'll find them. But anyway, not, like, another thing with that guilt for condo buyers, it's like, the, every every time, con, every, for every condo built, there's a percentage of our culture that is getting destroyed. And uh, it makes me think that I wanna, I wanna make some bumper stickers that say, Condos kill culture, because I, I, I truly believe that uh, condos are, are part of, uh, among a wide other things that are killing culture. Condos kill cultures. And uh, you can contact me. If you want one of these bumper stickers to put in your car, uh, go ahead and contact me uh, through my uh, television show, Shifterland. And, um, oh, I'm drooling. Ooh, hopefully I'm not getting high. Maybe I missed it, don't find it, but I doubt it. Well, let's put this in our basket. I'll eat the rest of this one later when I get home. Oh, well, here's a whole nother mushroom. Here is a whole nother mushroom. Let's see what this guy is. This is it, a whole nother. Well, we got, this one's growing underneath some sort of, I don't, I don't even know what kind of tree this is. But anyway, we got another, we got some bark. It's growing in a bark field, a field of bark. And uh, let me see what it says about mushrooms that uh, grow in a field of bark. Underneath a, uh, unidentified tree. Let me see here. Oh, what is this? Oh, maybe it looks a little bit familiar to the, uh, well, it doesn't have uh, the, my, the Mycena inclinate. The Mycena inclinate. So anyway, it says it's non-poisonous, and I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And, uh, well actually, I'm not sure what it is at all. I'm not, I, I, uh, I don't know. Maybe I should try my goggles. Let me, let me try my goggles. Maybe I'll build, do a little more analysis of this mushroom with my goggles on. Let me see here. Oh. Oh, man, that hurts. Woo! Oh. oh, man, yeah, these... I'm telling you, any mushroom hunter, forager, worth their, worth their goddamn morale, uh, needs a pair of these goggles, because, I mean... The vision that it gives you is incredible. And I can clearly state that these are not the mushroom I thought they were. There is this other mushroom called the, uh, well, it's, a, it's not that, it's a relative of the destroying angel. Totally, totally toxic. We can't touch this fucker, no way. We would die. See, these goggles saved my life. It's almost like I'm getting paid by the maker of these goggles to do advertising. All right, this is Cooking Kitty. I found, I found another, another poisonous mushroom. It's a good thing that I know my shit. I don't want to die. Found of uh, another poisonous mushroom, and uh, they rate, they rate, uh, they rate the mushrooms. Uh, the uh, their toxicity. There's uh, uh, eight, eight. There's eight toxic, uh, eight styles of uh, uh, 
of uh, classifications of toxins. And this one is this one is way higher in the list. Uh, uh, it's not a relative of it, but it's equally poisonous as the one called the uh, death angel or the destroying angel. But this is a, this is a different one. And um, anyway, here I'll just I'll just uh, share you a little bit of what uh, what would happen if you were to eat this. When the toxin is first ingested, the taste of the fungus is pleasant. You don't even know what's going on. And there is no indication of the consequences. Consequences. The delayed onset of symptoms is usually five to seven hours after ingestion. So you know, a little later on, you're gonna get fucked up. In the intervening time, the toxins enter the bloodstream and a manitin, uh, that's the poison, a uh, manitin inhibits protein synthesis in the liver cells. Initial symptoms include extreme pain, profuse vomiting, lethargy, I know all about lethargy, Diarrhea, I'm solid there, no diarrhea, uh, and distorted vision. However, a period of remission, which is the tricky part, a period of remission, follows, and during the interim, the victim may even feel somewhat better. In three to four days, symptoms of in three to four days, symptoms of damage to the liver and kidneys begin to appear. The onset the onset of severe pain then continues from three to six days when kidney failure usually culminates in death. Even when death does not, even when death does not result, uh, the illness lasts several weeks and may do permanent damage to your liver. So anyway, you know, if I eat this little, if I eat this little guy, this little beautiful little guy down here, yeah, if you eat this little guy, you know, you're pretty much, unless you're like superhuman or superman or I don't know, or or maybe not human, like me. I, so I could eat this. I'm a kitty cat. I got a different metabolism. I'll take care of this toxin. Anyway, uh, you eat this. Humans eat this. They're uh, probably going to die or have um, permanent liver damage. Hi mom, can you guess what's in this one? It's not just tonic water, that's for sure. It is so cool. There's, there's, uh, this is a cooking kitty and there are so many birds in my backyard it just blows my mind away. Because it's, it's uh, warm. It's early, first week of November, maybe because it's warm and, and maybe because they think they're gonna die or something, but there's, uh, I've seen some blue jays and, uh, and uh, some white jays, which are a little bit more rare. These birds, they're like blue jays, but they're white jays. And they don't have a little hood thing, but they're they're uh, they're white jays and not blue jays. And, uh, and then there's these other birds. Uh, well, to tell the truth, my bird identification skills are pretty poor. Because um, to be honest, uh, I just chase them and eat them down and gobble them up. But, you can uh, afford some bird traps. How come you? Oh, uh, uh, well, well, I can. But, bird feeders. Well, I, bird traps. We don't need to. Right, right now, I I have I spent my last money on cake frosting. Cake frost. Oh, and uh, oh, yeah. So, uh, uh, thanks, Dan. Thanks for the alcohol because uh, for my birthday, I'm using it right now. Just, so this is a shout out to Dan, my buddy. Dan, thanks for the alcohol. Thanks for the gin. Um, yeah, the birds. The birds. There's so many different birds. There's some little ones, some ones that look like robins, but they're not robins. There's ones that look like pigeons, but they're not pigeons. They're closer to a dove. I mean, I'm curious about. Uh, I'm curious about how. Um, about how a pigeon, how a pigeon, here, let me come over here, I like this little tree. I'm curious how a pigeon and a dove can have so much in common. It's like, I need to do some research, but, you know, when, uh, when you're running a corporation like I am, and, uh, you like to drink a lot, it's tough, it's, you can't just go do random research, you're like, you know, you just can't flit around all day like the little birds hopping around, hop, 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 like, pigeons? that are flying around like doves, they just drift. They'll, they'll come from a tree and they'll drift with their wings up like this and they'll just, or coast I guess, and they just drift down and they're kinda, they don't, they don't have the same colorings as a pigeon but they have the same body style. They totally look like pigeons, but I swear to God that they're some kind of dove. I mean, I've seen them in the trees together doing stuff that doves might do, you know? Well, not this. But uh, courting, the stuff that you do before that, like I see them in trees courting, 
I mean, I know pigeons court too, but I don't know, just there's something about their body shape. Go. This is Cooking Kitty here. I'm I'm on the run. There's people. There's other foragers who are out here who are trying to find out my, my location of the infamous, 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 totally, totally rare, potentially extinct mushroom that I, I alone know the single lone location left in the entire planet. It's not including, uh, you know, space travel and Mars and all those kind of other areas, but you got to, anyway, it's a, it belongs to a, a, um, a family of mushrooms called the OGFU, the OGFU mushroom, and I'll, I'll, I'll share, hopefully, when I uh, can get rid of these predators, I'll show you a, a sample of what the OGFU family of mushrooms looks like. Thankfully, here, thankfully, I was camouflaged because those are some of my competitors. Some of the people are trying to find my secreted, coveted, totally secret, I mean, maybe the government knows about it, spot for the OGFU family of mushrooms. Thankfully, my kitty skin blended in with all these, all these beautiful yellow leaves. Uh, this is so gorgeous here. Anyway, so, uh, I was a little spastic. I haven't. I wasn't able to find any of the mushrooms. I was a little hurried. I wouldn't. I wasn't able to give the normal, uh, the normal, uh, the normal. What do you call it? The normal uh, focus of attention. That is, you know, maybe if I get my goggles on, I might be able to um, find some of those mushrooms. Now that those predators are gone, I could search in a little bit more leisure or fashion. Maybe I can find. For some reason, we're you know we live in the northwest here. That's Washington, and. Uh, there's some mushrooms called uh, the, the uh, you know, magic mushrooms to kind of get you high, all that kind of stuff. I wouldn't know nothing about it, but you know, anyway, it's there's. I guess they're called psilocybe or psilocybe. I don't know, one of those things. Anyway, we're gonna. I think I got the tools, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna find. 
All right, I lost my train of thought. Yeah. <laughs> Kids, this is what happens when you eat magic mushrooms. You become, uh, your vision becomes blurred, your sense of time distorts, and uh, colors, all the colors become false, and uh, a certain amount of lethargy, 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 a laziness settles in. But you know, when you eat those, those magic mushrooms that I'm gonna tell you all about, because don't do it, you don't wanna do it, you might end up like me. So anyway, well, uh, oh, oh, I'm gonna share you some information about those magic mushrooms because uh, you don't want to like if you do those you're just gonna get high and uh, lose all sense of yourself and and you're gonna you're gonna become one with nature so um, let's uh, I guess we'll just move on and I'll I'll share you uh, share you some of that information about uh, God psilocybe psilocybe it's it's like is it C, like phonetically, S E E C, low, L O W, C, low, psi. Oh, I'm tired. Psi B. C, low, psi B. Or is it like this? Is it psi, psi, low B? Psi, low B. Psi, low B. I think it's psi, low B. S H I G H, psi, L O W, psi, low B. I think it's. Psi low B. If we're lucky, if we're lucky, we might run into some hippies who are searching for some of these magic mushrooms and we can interview them and talk to them and, and ask them about their lives and why are they in a, in a public park looking for free drugs, which I am not doing. I'm here to forage for the famous OGFU mushroom. This mushrooms, if you wanna, if you wanna reach your potential, excuse me, if you want to reach your potential, the fastest, most efficient way, that's what America's all about, right? Efficiency. Your best, best way to become the most powerful person that you can become as a human is to ingest the OGFU mushroom and you will become self-actualized. You will be at the top of that pyramid, that being that all these different religions want to talk about, except for the Christian religion. That's a whole other thing. Never mind about that. Excellent, yeah. Yeah. Hi there. This is Cooking Kitty here. And, uh, well, I just want to share you, as I was mentioning earlier, a little bit of information about the, uh, the culture, the culture of, uh, of the Northwest there. For some reason, they've, all these people in this city have always been excited about magic mushrooms, the kibbens, all these different mushrooms that get you all high, get all high, hallucinogenic mushrooms. But, you know, I, I recently have found out that, uh, that, let me see, Washington, Oregon, California, and uh, Vancouver, and that's uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, not Vancouver, Washington, well, Washington's Washington, but yeah, Vancouver, Canada, has the greatest majority 
of the psilocybo, psilocybe, psilocybe uh, mushrooms that contain hallucinogenics than anywhere in the whole world. For some reason, they're concentrated. Maybe it has to do with the Cascade Mountains. I have no idea. But we have we have all these mushrooms here, and um, well, anyway, they uh, they contain a few things called the uh, God. Let me see. What are they called? They um, Oh, toxins, the toxins, the toxins that get you high, they, uh, they are, uh, psilocybin and psilocin. Those two, those two little chemical compounds, those are the ones that, uh, get you all freaked out. And anyway, these guys, this, uh, this manual, this manual that's been my research and other research that I've done, they, uh, uh, they consider those two constituents, those two chemical things, psilocybin, psilocyan, 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 psilocybin. Anyway, they uh, they consider them to be a um, a uh, uh, a type four toxin, and uh, they consider it to be poisonous. They consider. Uh, uh, these mushrooms that all the kids going out all the magic mushrooms they they consider it to be a um, Poisonous and so their recommendation at the end of their entry is that uh, they would say therefore I can't quote. I mean that would be uh, plagiarism plagiarism is cheating. What is it? Oh copy right in fringe mint anyway um, They suggest that you not eat them because they're poisonous because they're a toxin but uh I know, I've, I, as far as I can tell, I'm okay. I've had them, I feel okay. I've had them in the past and I don't have them anymore. I've moved on, you know, I'm into a, I'm into a, uh, another phase of my life. So I don't, I don't do that kind of thing anymore. I used to, I used to. Maybe that explains why I'm having a conversation with this awesome prehistoric plant. It's gorgeous. Isn't it a gorgeous plant? It's so, it is so beautiful. I love, I love this area. I love this area of the Arboretum. Thank God they didn't pave it over with proposition number one, because then we wouldn't be here today. There'd be a freeway here and all the oil leaking from the road into the lakes, into the fish, and then into our bodies. And that's just another way to get high. You got all the oil and all the like modern commerce, and it all drains into our water system. I mean, you might as well go and eat those type four toxins uh, that are uh, in the psilocybe, because I mean, you're, you're eating toxins just being alive. Being alive is uh, poisonous. I mean, you're drinking, I mean, you have all these Pollution. You have all this pollution coming in your body is what I'm trying to say. So, um, anyway, here. The psilocybe is considered to be a uh, type 4 toxin. I'm just going to share with you, if I may. Uh, oh. Man, I'm getting so excited about this topic that my infrared spectrum analysis goggles are fogging up. So I'm just going to... Let me see here. What is this? Type 4 toxins. These toxins affect the central nervous system and, re and the result is moderate to strong hallucinogenic reactions. Symptoms include sensory distortion, visual distortion, brilliant colors, with both impaired ability to concentrate in objects appearing longer and bigger than they really are. I've experienced all those, by the way, and I find it to be just peachy dandy awesome. What else do we got? In some cases, subjects experience depression, anxiety, and fear. The symptoms often felt in a very short time, the symptoms are often felt in a very short time, 15 minutes to an hour. In some cases, nausea and vomiting have occurred. I've had a little bit of nausea from what they're talking about, but never vomiting. Just a mild amount of nausea, nothing, nothing benefits are way way so high past a little bit of nausea who cares about a little bit of nausea you can get nausea trying to drive through town because the traffic so sucked because people like to drive their cars the compounds involved are in the uh -oh, the LSD the sergic lysergic acid family of hallucinogenic compounds the purity of toxicity usually lasts 6 to 12 hours but this is very much dose dependent.
Hi there. This is Cookie Kitty here, and I have, well, I didn't find this mushroom here. I planted it because this mushroom is so secret, so sensitive, so vulnerable, it's like extinct. I mean, you don't normally hear about extinct being uh, applied to plants, but this, this mushroom is nearly extinct. I just planted this here. I cannot, I cannot, this mushroom is so valuable, so important, I cannot show you where I found it in this park in the Arboretum in Seattle, Washington. But I did find it in this park. This mushroom that I planted here, that I did not find here, but I have found it in this park in a secret spot, which you will never, ever, ever find because you don't know the code word. You don't know how to find it. You don't know how to disappear. You don't know, you have no idea how to find this mushroom in this park. But anyway, this is a member of the OGFU mushroom, otherwise known as the Operation Get Fucked Up. That's right. This mushroom is known as the Operation Get Fucked Up mushroom. It's a family member of it. It's unclassified. There's there's other kinds of it, but they don't they don't I mean they don't have any names for the individual species. It's just a family of the OGFU. Operation O G Get F Fuck You Up. Operation Get Fucked Up. Anyway, this is um, if you can find this mushroom, which you're not going to, because I only know the secret spot. This is the only place that grows on the entire planet. And uh, not right here, obviously. I told you I planted it here because I, I can't share my secrets where I found it. And you'll never find it. You'll never, ever, 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 ever. You will never, you will never, ever find this mushroom. Anyway, this mushroom will get you so high. All those other psilocybo, the cabenzi, and the, what's that other weird, that cact, even the cactus. It's not even a mushroom. What's that cactus called that all those people eat? What's it called? The cactus? Um, oh, peyote, 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 peyote. Anyway, this mushroom, if you can find it, which you will not, will guarantee, well not guarantee, but it will speed your efficiency towards uh, your potential. It will, it will raise your existence to something that yogis, yogis, people are in the yoga doing, people are looking for spiritual, like to reach that little, oh, oh, guys, oh to reach that spiritual top. A thing called self-actualization, where you reach your maximum potential. Well, in this great land of America, we're all worried about efficiency, total efficiency. Everything's electronic. Everything's modern. If you want to get to the, the best that you can be, it's all like efficiency. You want to cheat, cheat, cheat. Well, I know it's not cheating. It's natural. But if you... If you eat this mushroom, you will become self-actualized. You will become the master of your own domain, and you will become the master of everything around you. You will become, you know, you talk about how you become one with nature. You will become one with nature. You will become one with the condo builders. You will become one with the freeways. You will become one with I mean, not just artificial things, natural things, you will, well, I guess it's kind of like, you might be God or something, but anyway. <sighs> Sometimes if you want to get where you want to go, you're going to have to endure a little bit of hardship. And, uh, the making of the mushrooms. I didn't realize this was going to be such a workout. I was going to make, what was the mushroom going to make after this? The flaming one. Oh yeah, flaming one. So I don't even need any more insta stuff. No, oh, yeah. Just pipe that bitch. Got that little corner right here, and just like that little part right here. Right here. Oh. 
God, man, we should eat this afterwards. It's, well, I'll eat part, I've, to tell the truth, the, the frosting's way more uh, tasty than the... Uh, Actual mushroom. Than the mushroom. But how does the mushroom and frosting together taste? Gross. Tastes like frosting. Tastes like frosting. Now you, yeah, now you're getting it. really big <laughs> that one's really big okay so we gotta act quick so no um insects decide Get to lay their eggs, eggs in here you know before you eat it because i don't know if you've ever had an amoeba in your stomach but uh uh oh no uh, no i haven't where did you get amoebas in your stomach no i haven't i've oh. known somebody who has from from what uh they went to china <laughs> well, see, I feel alpha right here. Oh, yeah. Man, I've I've eaten the the OG FU mushroom operation. Get fucked up. I've eaten that mushroom, and I'm a little higher. I'm a little higher than I'm accustomed to being. But uh, I think I have found I have found the destroying angel, the death angel, one of the top poisonous mushrooms that there is out there. If I eat this, it's nearly guaranteed that I will die or have permanent liver damage. But I feel I ate that, that, that OGFU, the Operation Get Fucked Up mushroom. I hit the pinnacle of my life. I was at the, that's what happens when you take drug kids. You think that you're 
that you think that you're at the top of the world, but really, when you get off your drugs, you're just who you are. So anyway, don't do too many drugs, kids. Just do a little bit, but don't do a lot. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, I, I want to find out what happens when you die. I want to find out, I, I want to share my viewers with uh, a death experience. So I'm going to eat the, what is it? The death angel or the uh, destroying, the destroying angel or the death angel mushroom. And uh, I am willing to end my career on this mushroom to share you I don't, oh, oh, oh my god, oh. As I speak now, I can feel the toxins entering my bloodstream. And they're coming, the toxins are coming into my bloodstream. They're attacking my liver. But at some point, what will happen is, I will feel a false sense of safety and the, 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 the diarrhea will end and the, uh, the, the, the uh, nausea will end and I'll think everything's okay. But then, at some point, are these really crocuses? Is that what they're <coughs> called? Are they called crocuses? No, but oh, they're beautiful. Anyway, we got some beautiful... I am going to die next to some beautiful flowers that my... Carolicious, Carolicious, Kara Nicholas, Carolicious filmographer has been filming me. Thanks, Kara. Uh, anyway, You're welcome. she thought these were crocuses, and I plan to die next to these beautiful flowers. With uh, yeah, my liver, my liver is now being attacked by the toxins that are held within this mushroom, which is a type one. Uh, you know, one of the most devastating mushrooms that you could mistakenly eat, of course, unless you wanted it to die. I mean, I don't want to die, but uh, I actually have one hope. There is one mushroom, the most rarest mushroom that there is on the whole planet, in the whole fucking universe. It is the infamous flaming mushroom. It's like bioluminescence. Like there's all these critters in the planet that, that glow, 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 glow on their own with no power source. Well, there is this famous mushroom that burns and flames on its own with no power source. It's just a mushroom and it burns and burns and burns and burns and burns. And this mushroom, the infamous burning flaming mushroom has the power to bring me back from eating the, like one of the, the well, as far as I understand in my research, Oh God, the top toxic, the top toxic mushroom. If we can find which the flaming mushroom, if we're lucky, I can come back and I can share with you my near death experience. This is Cooking Kitty here. And I've, I found, I have found, uh, I have found the magical flaming mushroom I have uh, this mushroom is the, the rarest the rare I have the rare I have just ingested I have just ingested the most poisonous mushroom that there is the destroying angel the death angel it is it's for sure I am going to die or have permanent liver damage but I have found what I have done is I have found through my kitty senses oh, that the that I have found the infamous flaming mushroom and this mushroom has all the properties necessary in it i want to have a little bit of burning but once i ingest this mushroom it will it is the antidote the antidote it will cure me it's not even an antidote it goes beyond space and time this 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 mushroom um, this this mushroom right here has everything that i need to counteract the toxins the poisons that the most poisonous the most poisonous mushroom that I have ingested. Uh, uh, I wanted to share with you the death mushroom, but I lied. What I'm going to do is I'm going to eat the infamous flaming mushroom, and I will, I will counteract, I will be able to counteract the toxins 
that I, by, that I have ingested with the, the destroying angel, the death angel, the most toxic mushroom that there is on this planet. This mushroom right here, I mean, there probably hasn't been a mushroom, is it a century or a decade? What's a hundred years? I don't know, this mushroom, there, this not, uh, for all intents and purposes, this mushroom, mushroom, this, for all intents and purposes, this mushroom does not exist. Does not exist, but I have found it. And it, I mean, it is the only way modern science, with all its DNA restructuring, all its genetics, they cannot save me from eating. If, 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 if I was to go to the hospital right now, I'd eat the most poisonous mushroom there is on the planet. But this mushroom is going to cure me. If I went to the hospital, to the doctors, they don't know shit. They couldn't save me. They have no idea, but this mushroom will. 